It's time, no. The Odds and Evens Conference. There's two conferences in the NPC Rugby. In the Odds Conference, Waikato lead. They played six, won five, drawn one, lost none. In the Evens Conference, Canterbury lead. They've played seven, won six, lost one. Owen Franks, 108 games for the All Blacks. No tries. 153 for the Crusaders. Five for the Canes. 26 for Canterbury. The legend of All Black and Red and Black Rugby joins us. Welcome back to the show, mate. Yeah, thanks. Good, good to be here. Yeah, so you're playing NPC, mate. How's it going? It's good. Yeah, actually really enjoying it. Um, to be honest, I've got a, got a whole new level of respect for, uh, for NPC. I haven't played it in such a long time. I think I played a couple of games back in 2019. But, um, mate, it's a tough competition. You know, uh, the physicality is right up there. And... Um, you know, it'd be easy to think that, you know, there's not a lot of super players. Uh, um, the standard would be down, which it is in some respect. But in terms of for a front rower, um, you know, you're still playing against big, strong guys who, who want to come hard at you. It's their piece. Um, and, and, you know, some of these guys might not be at super super level, but, uh, yeah, like I said, they're, they're big and they're strong. And, um, you know, when you're in a former All Black, you've, you've got a bit of a target on your back as well. So <laughs> enjoy the challenge. Was it always your intention to come back and play MPC? Um, to be honest, it obviously wasn't a goal um, to come back and, and play MPC. You know, the the goal is to be fit and ready for the Hurricanes. But in terms of the way things panned out with uh, a couple of injuries I've had, it's, um, it's been a blessing really because I've been able to play consistent games and, you know, as much as, um, you know, I love training, I love the gym, but, you know, you can't beat training with a team week in and week out, developing your skill sets. Um, and, you know, you get that, that gym work as well, obviously, with the team. So, uh, you know, as much as I'd like to be just left away in my garage, just smashing weights every day, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, the, best thing. it's the best thing for me um, in terms of having a really good Super Rugby season next year. This is Owen Franks with more than 100 tests for the All Blacks. Yeah, the career ended before that. World Cup and a lot of us still shaking our heads about that um, and I remember a couple of years at last year you were saying that you had ambitions to play you know at the highest level which I loved hearing because I just thought there's no way a guy like you who has had so much success is actually going to put his boots on if he doesn't actually believe or want to the, to achieve at the very top level but is that realistic now or is that something that you've given up on? Oh it's not something I've given up on is it realistic? Um, maybe not but like I said, um, you know, when I had those interviews and they just said, you know, it's still got All Blacks ambitions, I think it was more around the fact that, you know, if you're a, if you're a New Zealand rugby player and you're playing in New Zealand and you don't aspire to be an All Black or give your best shot to give yourself a chance, then, I, you know, like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. my, that's, that, that's my mindset. And, and, you know, it might be a long shot, but, um, you know, it could, and, um, it gets me out of bed every morning to do those little extras and, and, and to try and be the best I can. You know, it might be a little bit down the picking order, but um, as far as I'm concerned, I know what I'm capable of at that level. And, you know, a, a few injuries. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, you, you never know. And, I, you know, I'm not banking my house in it or I'm not going to get despondent if it doesn't work out. But, yeah, hell yeah. Every, every day I get up, I think, uh, you know, I still have all black standards and the way I train and, and the way I want to perform on the weekend, no matter what. Um, competition I'm playing. How good are you playing, man? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty happy to be honest. Set piece is, is going really good. The, the scrum work at Canterbury, it's good to be a part of, um, you know, dominant four pack. Um, and, you know, I'm getting better with the, the more games I've played. Uh, you know, over the last few years, I've had some decent injuries and I just haven't been able to consistently play. So, I feel like every week at the moment, you know, I'm getting better and more, more comfortable in the saddle. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Look, I know that, um, you know, the way that the game is played supposedly changes. And, and, and we went through this phase of, you know, wanting to our, our props, calling them ball playing props and wanting them to express themselves and all this kind of stuff. And, and then it came to South Africa over there in Nelspruit and we were just torn apart. And all of a sudden we've gone now, it seems, back the other way. We want guys that can actually anchor scrums. You know, we want people who are really good at set piece. We want people who can actually just do those most basic jobs. I don't know whether the whole thing has changed that much at all, mate. I think for a front row, is that's the only thing that you should be doing, isn't it? I wouldn't say the only thing, but yeah, you're right. I don't think it's it's ever changed. You know, I don't want to comment on the All Blacks' performances. And no, 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 no
in terms of a set piece game, you know, I always think of scrums and and balls as the you know the ugly sister that no one wants a part of. <laughs> have such a yeah. That can have such a, um, as, as you've seen, can have such a psychological impact on the game. And, you know, I learned that big time when I was playing in a premiership in England. And, um, you know, we've all seen how South Africa have used it to, to win a World Cup. But I, I do believe uh, front rowers should have an all-round, all-round game and should be able to contribute, um, you know, outside of scrummaging. But the whole ball playing prop thing, you know, there's... Uh, there is a few props who can do it on the international stage. You know, Kyle Sinclair's really good at it. Alice Genja, two two props that are really dynamic. But for the most part, as a front rower in a test match, you're running into brick walls. And, um, you know, especially for the first half of the game, if you've seen from our props, you know, it's a real grind. You know, you've got to nail your set piece. It's, uh, it's that real tight game of chess. And, you know, hopefully things open up when you've... Um, when you've earned the right to. So, yeah, no, I think you're right. It's a, first and foremost, you you know, you make your money off scrummaging really well. Um, you know, obviously clearing rocks brutally and, and being really dominant in, in contact areas. So, yeah, that's just the way I've always thought anyway. Do you find it bizarre how the Yarps take off their whole front row after 30 minutes? They did it against us for 35 minutes. The whole thing gets interchanged, mate. Uh, I do a little bit. It is a little bit weird, you know, so close to half time, but uh, it obviously works for them. Um, they've got two pretty dominant, dominant front rows. Um, their front rows too. I'm not sure. You know, sometimes their starting crew they don't they don't look the fittest, so I'm not sure whether they <laughs> could go too much further than what they do. You know, and they they slow the game down quite a bit. Mm. So it's obviously got a bit of a tactic of this. Did you, do you do you train though to play 80 minutes because you know the, this whole thing about you know I'm watching Aaron every week get dragged off after 60 some of the props go 50 and that do you, do you actually train to play the whole game because it used to be a war of attrition and by the last 20 minutes you got your opposition on their knees you've actually bent them down you've buckled them down you've worn them down that's the whole point yeah I suppose that's the question uh, isn't it you know the I'd say the modern game now for a front rower, um, 80 minutes, you know, you might be able to do it every now and again, but week in, week out would be unrealistic. But then you have the question of, you know, is the game getting too slow? Is there too many stoppages? You know, if you had it back, I suppose, when I started and it was um, two starting props and one on the bench, you know, one guy would have to go 80 minutes and, and the other guy's probably going at least 50 to 60. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it's just, the way the game's going, you know, guys are getting bigger and stronger and it's probably not realistic to go that long week in and week out. But like I said, it's that question, isn't it? Mm. Do you love the story of Fletcher and you all made it reminded me of you too, right? You know, reminded me of you and your brother Ben and that, that, you know, you don't have to actually have gone through all the academies and everything else. Actually, if, you know, if you've got the will and desire and you've got your family behind you and his old man did the same as yours, you know, looking after him, taking him to training, stuff like that. So it's a fantastic yarn. No, it was an awesome story. I was I was pumped to see him, um, you know, just grab his opportunity, really. Um, so it reminded me of, I think I had my first test start in South Africa and he had his first one um, coming off the bench and he made the most of it, scrum really well. And, yeah, like you said, the story with his old man, you know, obviously a really, um, you know, down-to-earth family from out of Rangiora um, in Christchurch here. It's not all, it's not really a high school that, I suppose, consistently produces um, great players. So it's just wicked that there's still that pathway for for kids to come through, no matter what school they're at. And, um, you know, you can't help but respect a kid, you know, especially when he's squatting 270 kilos as well. He's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know what that means, mate, but it sounds bloody impressive. How is Ben, by the way, mate? Where is he? No, he's good. He's, uh, he's coaching Scarlets in Wales at the moment. Ford's coach there, so... Yeah, he's uh, three three years into his coaching journey. He's, he's pretty passionate about it, about being a um, you know the best coach he can be. I think he's right. you know he's even pretty keen to eventually go into the head coaching. So no, he, he's doing real well. All right. Well, all the very best for the rest of the season. So good to catch up with you. And all the, and look, obviously you've been a Hurricanes man, mate. I can't wait for you to pull on that jersey next year too. It's uh, you know stay injury free, won't you? I will. I'll do my best. Cheers, madam.